Hello and welcome to New Year Game Plus. My name is Donald and I'm joined once more by Jason. Tim is still recovering from his big, massive holiday. Yeah, How are you, Jason? well, yeah, no, Tim is recovering, yeah. so we, we hope that he gets well soon and uh, we see him back on the uh, the chair. But the the gaming world has not stopped in his stead and no. we are coming to the end of the drought, Donald. It's already started. <laughs> But I like the. I kind of have grown to appreciate these droughts, though. It gives me time to catch up on those those massive piles of games that I've yet to let's, finish. Let's me finish uh, EDF with a different class. Yeah. Uh, let's me play another file of Fallout New Vegas, and let's me unlock uh, the rest of the characters I haven't unlocked in Budokai Three. That's and all I've done. And let's me continue to run into the wall with Destiny. It allows me to continue to run, <laughs> run into the wall with Hearthstone. Nice. And allows me to continue running into the wall with Dota. Modern so, gaming. Yeah. Yeah. And exercise in. Futility and frustration. Yeah, yeah. So, video games great. Well, speaking of good video games, though, there are actually a few on this episode. We have oh, Deception yes. Four, the Night Princess mix thing. I can't remember the exact title, but I know it's Trap a Master Four Thousand. Yep, yeah, done. Trap Master Four Thousand. We also take a look at Gears of War remastered for the Xbox One. Yes, um, which here we are, Gears of War and Yu-Gi-Oh, because apparently it's two thousand and six. Because again. it is always time to duel. <laughs> sorry, du 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 duel, Jason. Uh, du du yeah, okay, it's fine. I got what do you mean? We're like we love memes here on New Game Plus. Do we? Okay, <laughs> uh, right. Um, and you also got the chance to sit down with the guys from Disney Infinity three point oh. Yes, 3 yes we got with? an early look at um, the Star Wars edition of Disney Infinity three point oh. We speak to one of the producers and get the lowdown on what's happening with all that. And uh, New Planeswalker Plus comes up as well. It's I don't know, this one's a bumper cry again. We're through the drought. We're, we're through the worst of it. And we've come... No, the worst of it. The show was always good. And I anyway, don't, and I don't even have any Gallahorn to show for it either. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> anyway, on that note, Deception. No, what's the other one? Yu-Gi-Oh, one of them. You'll see. Now, Trey, we're here to look at Deception for Nightmare Princess. That's I believe correct. that is the, the that, full that, title. That is I, the full title. All right, cool. I did well there. But Deception itself is not your traditional kind of game. Like, it very much looks like Three Stooges, the action combat game. I yeah. don't know if I was to describe it as anything. Well, it's a Japanese game about traps. Except for this time, they are actual traps. Right, I was going to ask. Yeah, yeah that's okay. there's yeah. a confusion there. So basically, you strategically set traps in real time yep. and using yourself as a sort of lure, lure people breaking into your castle into the traps, Set off combos using the traps and hilarity ensues. Yeah, so so because and obviously this is the the one for next gen. It, it came out previously on the PS3, and this is the kind of Extreme Legends. Extreme story. Legends, that's right. So this actually introduces an entirely new character who has her own mode. Uh, it's the Nightmare Princess mode. Right. Yeah. And what's interesting about her is that while the original character was really only defensive, you had to lure people yeah, in. So right. Honeypot people into trap. Yeah, yeah, right. She ha uh, the new character has a kick that allows you to be proactive. Uh, so you can right. kick people into traps, you can kick people to continue combos, you can do a few different things. It also introduces a bunch of basically dream scenarios, like there's a school gym, there's um, right, like yep. play equipment, a whole bunch, of, there's a bidet for God's yeah, sake. Yeah, nice. So, so there's, there's all these sort of fun things added on. But the game actually has the full original scenario as well. Yeah, so cool. this is a really huge update and it adds a whole bunch of things to the game on top of that. So basically, yeah, it, for people who are looking for... I, I, do we even consider it more of a strategic game? I, I guess yeah, it is. It's, it's, a, it's almost a real-time strategy. Um, so it is a, an action game for people that want to think a bit more and need timing a bit more. And if you've never played it before, you get the full first game and all this extra stuff. And if you have played it before, the new mode is definitely enough to come back and enjoy a bit more. You know, get it's a trap. You need to get trapped. That's it's it's a trap. Getting in trouble trap. for that one. Yeah. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! was a mega hit in Shonen Jump as a mm. manga in the sort of mid-90s yep. and went on to spawn one of the few trading card games that could truly say it was on par with Magic at any point. Yep. And to this day, almost 20 years later, it's still one of the most popular games and animes ongoing. And as we lead up to the 20th anniversary, yep. they've decided they're going to go for the nostalgia market. We're all old enough for it now. Mm -hmm. And they're going to bring back the first gen of characters and basically release a bunch of stuff based on them. I think there's an OVA coming as well and a whole bunch of other stuff. Yep. And the first major sort of release that we've had for that is 
this game for PS4? Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist. Basically, it follows the storyline of nearly all five series, I think, of Yu-Gi-Oh! Or the five major formats. Yeah, all five major formats. Follows, you know, what, GX, the original, uh... I can't even remember the rest well, of them. There's five dragons. Five right? dragons. There's, there's all sorts cards of Cards on series. black or blacks on cards, you know, whatever it is, even way. But anyway, it follows them very well and it has so many of the cards as well. That's like, right. Like I think, what, it was 6,600 of the cards? Yeah, at least. And they're continuing to upgrade. It yeah. follows all the true, legit rules yep. of it so you can play it fully. But most interestingly is it lets you play the actual decks, individual characters in the series yep. use. So you can experience the shattering wins or losses of the characters mm. yourself. And if you ever thought to yourself, oh, I could have won that battle, well, now you can try it and you can even do fantasy matches. Yep. But it even lets you build your own custom decks by giving you booster packs mm. within the game that you buy with points. Uh, yeah, it's like it's it's got everything that a nostalgia freak could want. And it's just a good emulation of the game in general. It's also even got more than that. It's got what? Drafts, online drafts you can do with friends. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, the other one, I can't remember the other mode, which you, instead of doing drafts, you have like the three packs that you do. Oh, yeah. Uh, like a sealed, a that's what it yeah, is. sealed deck. Sealed deck. Um, there's so much there for this game. And plus the online modes, which is crazy, ranked matches, online friend matches, and just then the amount of content that this game actually gives you in the storyline is crazy. That's it. So, like, if you're interested in getting into the game or you've got a nostalgia bone to pick, then definitely look into it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty reasonable and, yep. you know, just heart of the cards, bro. Heart of the cards. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the brand new season of Planeswalker Plus. I'm your host, Alice Clark. This season, we will be following a wonderful new contestant who will show you at home what it's like to play Magic on a competitive level and how you can make your decks better. Let's go meet him. Hey, I'm Elias and I've been playing Magic semi-regularly for about two years now. I play in FNMs all the way up to GPs and play semi-competitively. Um, I like to attend local events such as preliminary pro tour qualifiers as well and grind out events when I can. My favourite formats would probably be limited as well as commander when I can fit in a game and my favourite colour is definitely red. I love casting a bird spell when I get an opportunity to. Uh, I would say I'm definitely more into deck tinkering than I am into deck building. I like looking at a deck that uh, is performing well and maybe trying to add my own improvements to potentially find some holes in a metagame and hopefully have, find some success there. So here in front of us, we have the Magic the Gathering Magic Origins Clash Pack. Okay, now, Lias, we've seen dual decks before. How does a Clash Pack differ to that? Okay, Alice, so a dual deck is essentially two decks that mm -hmm. are designed around specific themes, but they're kind of built to work against each other, and they're kind of designed to be played against each other, mm -hmm. like, on an ongoing basis. So they're in a closed world, and they've got cards throughout Magic history. Exactly. They, they take cards from um, Magic's entire pool yep. and they, they, try to, they try to build these themes to, to really just play nice with each other and stuff but they are designed direct, like to, to interact directly with one another. Okay. Uh, clash packs are a little bit different. Uh, there's two CC card decks just like in a dual deck mm -hmm. but these cards are all standard legal <laughs> which means that you could take any of the cards within this box to your local F&M. Yep. Friday Night Magic for those at home. Friday Night Magic and use those uh, in the standard, standard tournaments that they hold. How would we go about improving these decks to make them one powerful deck that we can go and crush people with? Okay, so simple doesn't always mean not powerful. Um, there are some very key cards within these, um, within these decks that kind of push you in those directions. Um, within the armed deck, you have a card called Collected Company, which pulls a lot of your smaller creatures out and puts them straight into the battlefield so you can continue to attack your opponent. Uh, the Dangerous deck has a Siege Rhino, which is one of the current staples of the standard format. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's built around a lot of bigger creatures and generating an advantage over time mm -hmm. so you can outlast your opponent over the long game. Great. Do you think we'll actually see this game play at Friday Night Magic or is it just a nice idea? I honestly think that mm -hmm. with enough you know, tinkering and a little bit of luck you could definitely do well at the local Friday Night Magic event. Awesome. Well, let's give it a go. Yeah, let's try.
what a lot of fun we all had. We laughed, we cried, Elias peed with joy. It was great. Tune in next time when we'll be continuing Elias' journey through magic. And also, a familiar face will return. I bet you can't guess who it is. Is it Shane? Yes. Yeah. Ah. I'm here with Matt Soley, one of the producers on Disney Infinity 3.0. How are you today? I'm doing great. How about yourself, man? Not too badly. Now, you're about to release this new version of Disney Infinity with Star Wars. Just give us a brief overview of what you have to offer in this latest installment. Oh, wow. Tons of stuff. As you hit, like, Star Wars. We finally got it in Disney Infinity. It's so cool. Um, so we have a bunch of playsets we've announced. We have Twilight of the Republic, which is the Clone Wars era like playset where you get to play as like Ahsoka Tano and Anakin Skywalker. Uh, we also have um, Rise Against the Empire, which will be sold with uh, Leia and Luke, and that will be the original trilogy sort of uh, playset. Uh, we also are going to do a Force Awakens playset, but we can't tell too much about it yet, so stay tuned. Um, we also are going to do an Inside Out playset that will be available at launch, and you'll get that. You'll have anger and joy in that pack as well. And then last but not least, we are going to do a Marvel playset, but uh, we haven't talked too much about it yet, so it's still a surprise. What do Star Wars fans have to look forward to in these playsets? So with the uh, Clone Wars era one, Twilight of the Republic, that's going to be a brand new original story based on the Clone Wars uh, cartoon show along with the prequel trilogy. We took the best of everything to make the coolest mm -hmm. like new story that we could. Um, with Rise Against the Empire, we wanted to pay homage to that brilliant trilogy and we didn't want to alter too much so it sticks very close to it so yeah that's what you're going to be seeing like when you play these so you're going to be able to experience like something new something familiar um for like um you know kids and adults they're going to be able to sort of share with each other what they love about star wars you know today a lot of kids like identify with the clone wars era really really well because they grew up with that meanwhile you and me we identify with the original trilogy so we have that sort of you know kid parents sort of crossover they get to teach each other what they love about star wars now, we're also seeing a playset for Inside Out, aren't we? Yeah, Inside Out playset, very different from the Star Wars stuff. Um, it's actually a casual platformer and puzzle uh, game. So basically, it's not about combat, unlike, you know, uh, Twilight of the Republic or Rise Against the Empire. It's more about trying to figure out puzzles and progress through it. Um, very, very cool. You get to play as uh, one of the five emotions inside Riley's head. So you get to play either as joy, anger, sadness, fear, or disgust. Really, really fun playset and really cool 2D platformer slash isometric platformer. You've got uh, various new additions to the uh, Toy Box, haven't you? Oh, yeah, tons and tons of new stuff, like 6,000 toys now inside Toy Box. I mean, that's, that's crazy. Um, we also have a new uh, really exciting tool that we have inside of uh, the Toy Box called the Path Creation uh, Tool. And basically what it allows you to do is create a path inside of uh, the toy box and attach an object to it. And we were talking about it a little bit earlier, but I'm really excited because you can attach a camera to it. And I think people are going to start creating maybe almost mini cutscenes inside toy boxes they make. So that's really, really exciting to see. Now, I've also got these little toys, don't we? <laughs> yes, we do. So uh, these are called Toy Box Expansion Games. So this particular one I'm holding in my hand, this is actually called Toy Box Takeover. So this is a sort of a traditional dungeon crawler inside of Disney Infinity's Toy Box mode. Why this is so exciting is you can play as any character you want inside Toy Box. So you can actually have like Ultron go up against like Davy Jones and ultimately stop Syndrome from taking over the Toy Box. The other one here is called uh, Toy Box Speedway. So Toy Box Speedway is a kart racer who was developed by Sumo Digital. Um, they're famous for doing uh, Sega Racing All-Stars. Uh, so they came in, did nine unique tracks, created three cups, 50cc, 100cc, 250cc. Um, also three different types of racing, standard, time trial, and battle. And they also redid all the weapons for battle racing. So they have some fun ones in here. But yeah, these are super, super cool. They'll be sold separately, but uh, definitely you're going to want to check them out. Well, thank you very much for speaking to us, Matt. Oh, thank you so much, man. It was a pleasure. All right, taking a quick break very quickly just to tell you guys that we have some winners for the Plantronics Ace of Arenas contest. Uh, thanks to those guys, we gave away three sets of wireless earbuds. Uh, the winners were Stacey Borg, Jade O'Shea, and Rebecca Costa. We'll be in touch very soon. Congratulations on winning that one. And don't forget to check the game out with your brand new fancy earbuds. The other one 
If you are into Ubisoft's Heroes of Might and Magic, the beta starts up probably today as you're watching this. So if you want the chance to win one of 100 beta keys, there's probably about 50 left when I'm filming this, make sure you go straight to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash new game plus TV. There's a post there waiting for you. Click it, follow the link, get a code. It's going to be great fun and hopefully you enjoy. Plus we'll have another very cool contest next week. supposed to be the end but we weren't ready to let go not without a fight you want to know who we are we're guardians we're hunters Titans, Warlocks, Revolt Raiders, Sword Bearers, God Slayers. We ride into the darkness together. Navigated our solar system, seeking to take back our planets and destroy the darkness at its heart. But all actions have consequences. We've angered a god, the Taken King, who promises to bring our destruction. Most would think it wise to run. But we're the line between survival and extinction. We are guardians. And guardians don't flee. They fight. Legend. So Jason, what do you think of that? Jason? Ah, uh, yeah, nah, nah, that was good. Yeah, you like, you, okay, tell me everything about that trailer. Okay, uh, so there was the guy who was had this real, like, pompous air of completely kind of, like, I'm surprised it wasn't an echo because his head was so far up his own ass while he was saying that. Uh, and then there was the part that looked like StarCraft Ghost, the Master Chief Edition, and then there was, like, Diablo showed up or something, <laughs> but he's got a chain gun. Do uh, so they even to, care anymore? Like, really? There are, like, there are people that go deep into the Halo lore. There are people that will go deep into the Destiny lore. Personally, though, I could not give five rats about the Destiny story, as neither could Peter Dinklage in his delivery <laughs> of either. But thankfully, in this new Taken Kid <laughs> expansion, bad. he is being taken out yeah. and being replaced by yeah. Nolan North. And they're pretty much upending most of Destiny's roots, year one roots. They've redone the leveling system, so instead of essentially you need better weapons to level up, you can actually level up organically. On top of that, the loot system's a lot fairer, and it just seems more like... More like something that people would want to play. I understand that it's fulfilling that Borderlands gap, right? I get yeah. it, right? And I mean, I was annoyed enough when Borderlands went cell shaded. I would have thought like a Mad Max era, a Mad Max style kind of game like that would have been fine. You're getting Mad Max, don't worry. That's what I'm saying. I'm getting Mad Max. So but, to me, I've got Guardians coming. I've got Mad Max. Yeah. And if I'm really desperate, I've got Borderlands and I can give Randy Pitchford Dirty Seeger money. <laughs> so I still like the shooting Destiny, though. Now, Cardi, Gears of War, the, it, it's one of the much-loved New Game Plus slash Level 3 favourites. Yes. Uh, we've, we played it many times, especially number two. We, we fiended that a heap. Many countless nights spent on Horde mode and multiplayer, just yes. going nuts at it. And it's it's a it's a favourite pastime of ours. Absolutely. So, Judgment came, and then nothing came. And then suddenly, Gears 1 is getting remastered for Xbox One. So, my worry is always, and I've said this on a lot of the PS3 ones that I've been on, what do we gain from the remaster? And I think in this one... 
we we gain enough. Yeah, you know, people know the story of Gears. Your Marcus Phoenix, your Gruff Manly Man. Yeah, um, takes takes place after the Pendulum Wars, yes. where a lot of the human race is extinguished because everyone's stupid and they like yes. to look. Yes. They like to war against each other. And then the emergence of locusts, which yes. are very malformed, deformed beings. Uh, that emerge from the ground like mole men. Yes, and so basically, you know, you, you play these soldiers uh, in these situations. It's very testosterone driven. But the main things with it are, are this: number one, I've always felt the Gears is probably the most honest representation of squad tactics that, that you will find. True. Like four man squads, um, you know, and the Huge way you play emphasis around. on flanking as yep. well. The game encourages you to kind of strategize amongst your uh, your yep. peers, and even AI actually stands the test of time yep. after all these years. And it, it, like it just flows. Um, Absolutely. For, for yep. an alternative to Halo, for something that's not as um, that is as dumbed down or as grassroots. Yes. Gears of War was a breath of fresh air nine yeah. years ago. And it, I mean, also, it, yeah, it obviously borrowed a lot of its uh, thing from Kill Switch, which is a game that nobody remembers. Uh, the Namco game. Anyway. The Namco dig. Yeah, yeah. but um, you know, so it, it has it, it set up a lot of what you know, Uncharted used. There's been plenty of games that have used the similar formula since that point. Um, but the big thing for me that I really took away from it that I, I thought was Fantastic to see LAN. Not only split screen, LAN. Mm -hmm. LAN multiplayer in a... This is 2015. <laughs> and we've got LAN. Like, it doesn't sound like a big deal, but I think having to go online all the time for multiplayer, as great as it is to have like access to all that, to, to not be able to then just like you know connect up a couple of Xboxes like we could when we played this originally would have been a great... Over, would have been a huge oversight. So to see it in there is... Fantastic. I guess it's a testament to how far video games have come since then and a lot yeah. of stuff that we, we took for granted back yes. then. So, I mean, Gears of War uh, Ultimate Edition does highlight some of the drawbacks. I know some of the cover mechanics can be a bit dodgy. Yes, um, and, it's and running there's a couple on, of bugs as well. Yeah, it yeah. is running on a modified engine, so it's not quite Gears 3, but it's not yeah. quite Gears 1 either, which yeah. kind of adds an interesting little element yeah, they, to they the still haven't utilized, uh, They still haven't optimized um, UT4 or yeah. UE4. Yeah, um, but at the same time, it also highlights some of the best stuff that we yeah. had nine years ago, stuff like System Link, yeah. um, some amazing playlists that, were, that offered yeah. a bit of variety, and every single person was playing different playlists yes N you know not the same not the same can be said for yeah. battlefield 4 anymore unfortunately absolutely but, like i said nine years for a nine-year-old game gears of war ultimate edition has shown that it can stand the test of time brown has never looked so good land donald it has land 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 so what's a land land is a local area network and before oh, you mean like a, like a physical internet you yeah say. yeah Can't, like it, a series it, of tubes it is it is so it's like that but, but basically what it was was before um, EA and Microsoft and Sony all wanted to track your buying gaming watching habits. Well, I, right? they, they know what hat size I have, so that's, that's a benefit. That's true, that's true. Um, what they would let you do is connect all your consoles up and you could play other people with basically no lag because it, it's only passing through. This. It was an amazing yeah. age. With, I like, get 30 ping nowadays. That's still pretty yeah, good. Shut up. <laughs> anyway, so it's very much a throwback to everything yeah. from that mid-2000s era. From yeah. The, from the scripting to <laughs> the bad the blokey blokey, yeah, to yeah. the land. Look, Brown has never looked so good. Basically, <laughs> that's, that's Gears of War summed up. And like, hopefully, uh, like I still like Gears of War. I, mm -hmm. And like, yeah, there's a lot of reasons not to like it, and I can understand most of them. But I still don't mind the series. I still think it's got a lot to offer. And I hope that Four does a really good job of selling its kind of post. -apoc I assume it's post apoc kind of world because I yeah. think that could work. But anyway, moral no, no, story no, no, is no, no. like like Destiny. I don't give five rats about the Gears of War. It's just essentially a walking do rag having emotions and guns. Yeah, yeah, I love you, Daddy. Anyway, <laughs> uh, moving on to next week's yes. episode, uh, we have lots of cool stuff, Donald. What yes. do we have? We have plenty and plenty of indie games on offer. We also have Until Dawn as well yes. for all your spooks. Yes, uh, we and it, so it's going to be one of the, it, again. It's, uh, it's a really big indie episode just because yeah. we know that coming into the next three months, we're not going to have time to look at them. So what no. we thought we would do is get all those cool games that you may not necessarily play once The Phantom Pain comes out, once Fallout comes out, once... Once Skylanders come out, once Lego God Dimension comes out, once Disney it. Infinity comes God out. God damn it, Donald. Anyway, so... The Game & Watch Amiibo is also coming stop, out. Stop, stop. <laughs> anyway, so you should check us out uh, at our website, www.newgameplus.tv. You should like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash newgameplustv. You should go to Twitter and Instagram at newgameplustv. And you should follow us on YouTube and Twitch. We are newgameplustv. We are. Thank you, Donald. Thank you, Jason. And we will see you next week.